I'm not sure about you, but I've always been on the hunt for the perfect brake chopping technique. I started travelling down this path a little while ago with my Aim and Breaks the Secret to it All video. Here I began to explore a couple of core philosophies. Firstly that it's infinitely better to use long slices rather than chop up with lots of individual hits. This mono long slice technique as I like to call it does take a little bit more preparation before you start programming but actually when you do get to the programming stage it's a lot more enjoyable and a lot more fun to work with. So to start with, I've just got this drum break I've picked from my sample library and I will play this for you now. Okay, so we've picked our drum break and the first thing we've really got to think about here is warping this break to our song BPM. Now there's three main options here which I like to use. The first one is very simple, in Renoise you have this beat sync option and this is just going to pitch up the break to your song BPM and you've really just got to match this value here on the right. It's usually a multiple of 8 or of 16 and you've got to play with it until it sounds right. But that seems to have pitched it up really nicely and it's got this two bar passage running at our song BPM now. The second option is to go into a door like Logic and to use one of their time stretching algorithms. Now Logic has this slicing one which is really great for drums and preserves the transient detail very well. So I can literally just drag that into this two bar passage in Logic with my BPM set to 165 as well. The great thing about Logic is I can actually come and I can align these markers so I can Put little markers in and I can make sure all these beats are directly on the grid so I'm usually just trying to do this for my main kicks and snares and then I let the shuffles kind of do what they want so that might be a kick there and that might be a kick there. So you want to leave some of the original humanization of the drums but it's really important I think to get these tight drums is to have your kicks and snares hitting bang on the grid and that's really going to help us later on. Okay, so there's one more technique that I think is really worth mentioning here and it does take a little bit longer to set up but it does let you do a few cool things once you get there. I call it the gate to tempo technique and essentially what you've got to do is put slice markers at all of the hits of your break and then you go right click slices, render slices to phrase. Now if I just trigger this with enter you can hear that it's now sped up the break, but it hasn't pitched it up to get it to warp to our tempo. It's actually just cutting the ends of all the samples off. But there's a few cool things that we can do. But firstly, what we've got to do is get it from the phrase editor to the pattern editor. So the easiest way to do this is just to select the whole thing and cut it and then turn this phrase off. Come to the pattern editor. You've got to make sure you have the delay column open and then we can paste this in. The next thing to do is actually to assign all of these notes to the correct instrument. So you can do this manually by just putting the number in to assign them to instrument one. But actually there's this handy little tool called the convert instrument number tool. And so I've set it up so I can just press a hotkey and just convert all of these notes to the selected instrument. So the next thing to do is actually to match this lines per beat value in the main window to the one that we had in our phrase editor. So in the phrase it's 16. So in the main window I've got to go ZL and then 10 is going to be 16 in hexadecimal. And so that is going to mean that this break now is going to be rolling around perfectly but we've converted all the notes into the pattern editor. Cool. So what's the point in all this? Well the first thing you can do is now I can do a sort of manual quantizing, the same kind of thing I was doing in Logic, I can do in Renoise. And here I'm using the Super Nudge tool, and you can see I can just nudge all these values, so now the snare is hitting perfectly on the beat, and then I can go to say this next one, and I can pull all these down, so this is gonna be aligning perfectly again. And you can nudge groups of notes around to make them all work with your track. So I've kind of pulled everything forwards in this beat now, but if I let it roll and just see how it's sounding. 
So now we've done some manual quantizing in the main pattern editor, I'm just going to show you the real reason why I think this is a very valuable technique. And that's actually to come into this modulations panel. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually load operand onto pitch. And I'm going to assign this macro at the top here to the value in operand. Okay, so now we've done the pitch, I'm going to come to volume and I'm actually going to load an ADSR onto volume. Let's pull down the attack, pull down the sustain and pull the release right down. And then I'm actually going to assign decay to another macro, but I'm going to pull this max thing right down to say one second. So the max is going to be one and the min can be something like 7.5. What's really cool about this is if we compare it to the first break we did where we just pitched it up with uh, Renoise's algorithm, here it's just got a static pitch for all of the chops and it's just automatically assigning the pitch to warp it to our tempo. But with this gate to tempo technique, we can actually change this pitch all around and still have everything firing in time with our track. The other thing we can do is this decay, and this is actually going to gate the sample, so it's going to shorten all the hits even more, but it's a really cool effect. Especially if you're making steppy drums or more minimal drums, or you want to turn breaks into more like a hi-hat or a percussion element, this is a really good trick to do, as well as using it as an effect in your tracks. Okay, so whichever one of those methods you picked, you should now have ended up with a drum break running at your song tempo with the kicks and snares or the on beats quantized. And the whole point of that is that it makes it very easy when we come to the programming stage in a second. But there's two controls that I think you need to turn on in Renoise and that are very important to think about. One of them is this mono control up here, and this means it's just gonna play one note or one voice at a time in this instrument. And the second one is this control here which is going to let the slices play through one another. Now if I just trigger with this on every time it hits a new slice it's going to chop off the previous one but if I take it off everything's going to play to the end and this is why I call it the long slice method because you can just trigger a, a slice at the start and it will play all the way through to the end of the sample unless you put an off note in or another note in. In my Amen's break video, I started to explore this idea even further by taking these long recordings of me playing with live effects whilst I was looping a break in Renoise. And this is really simple to set up. I essentially have this macro instrument where uh, this is actually available on my website and it's in this dub effects pack I'm selling in the comments of this video. So it's really cool this instrument and there's all this other stuff going on where you can add flanging effects and what I just do is get my audio editor called Twisted Wave and I hit recording and then anything I do in Renoise will be recorded. Once I've finished recording all of that cool effect stuff out of Renoise I can then take that long passage into Logic and in Logic I can chop this all up and at even intervals all the slices so each one of these slices is a bar long or even half a bar long here so maybe I'd want to do them at a bar and so we get all these cool little chops of that long um, effects instrument and so what I would then do is go through that whole passage and pick all the best ones out that I like. Cool, so there's loads of crazy fun effects in that little sequence and I would just take all of that and chuck it all back into an instrument in Renoise and then that's great for little fills and little effects sections whenever you want them. In my Photek video I continue to advance this technique by exploring a number of ways to create hit variations from the individual hits of a drum break. I'll start this by extracting an individual hit like a snare from the whole drum passage. 
And then I will run this through. One of my favorite things is Trash 2. And Trash 2 has all these amazing, um, conv in the Convolve setting, has these amazing convolution uh, reverbs or convolution spaces. And I will just click through all of these spaces until I find things that I like and always pick the best ones out of a whole bunch from that. And they just give you lots of cool variations to use in your track to break up the monotony of hearing the same snare hit over and over again. Another technique I love to use to create these cool resonant snare hits is actually to use Filter Freak or, or a filter plugin. And here what I'm doing is using a bandpass filter with quite high resonance. And I'm essentially going to sweep through the, the snare and just listen for nice knocky sounding resonances in there. So that's a really pleasant knocky wooden sound in there and you'll usually find a couple of these really nice resonances in each of your snares and they're not necessarily good for every snare hit that you're going to use in a drum passage but they are good just to give you that cool variation. Especially that last one has a really nice knock to it. Cool, so I'm just jumping into my track in Renoise now that I made for this project and I want to demonstrate the these hit variations and I have this passage near the end of the song where I've essentially just swapped loads of the original snare samples for all of those cool resonance and convoluted snares that I created earlier in Logic. As well as having all the variations, especially of snare hits, I also like to have long hits of both the kick and the snares. Now there's a few ways to go about with this, but the first way uses audio editing. And the reason I do this is because a lot of times you'll have a break and you'll only have a short sample of a kick or a snare that's usable in the break. So this one actually has a little shaker there, so you only really have this part of the snare and that's quite a short sort of eighth note or quarter note snare. But sometimes I want to use a lot longer snare in, in a passage or in a drum passage. So what I would actually do is go, you, what you do is you take the tail of the sample and you copy it across and then you reverse it. But you can see because I reversed it, the sound is now whipping back up um, like it's been reversed. So you have to counter that with these little bits of volume automation. So you can see I'm actually dipping the volume as the sound's whipping back up. And that really helps to counter that whipping sound. And so I've got a really natural sounding snare where I've used the original room of the snare, but I've made the snare a lot longer. So the original snare was this long, and then I've got one that's this long. Another thing you can do to sort of advance that take even more, especially if you're doing a really long hit, like this kick drum's a lot longer, is actually to not only do the individual um, volume automation on all the hits, but to do some overall volume automation as if the whole thing is tailing down. And you can see just by messing with this volume automation here, I can make the tail of the kick sound a lot more natural. One of the reasons I put so much effort into creating those long kick and snare samples is because I really love to use them to break up really fast paced passages of drums in my tracks. And then you have this long kick and a long snare and especially if you use backwards commands as well with them. You can really give the ears a rest and then you can get back to all the crazy drum programming you were doing before. Another thing I love to do to extend the hits is actually to use big reverb spaces. And if you keep these reverb spaces in stereo, they generally sound a lot more like a big effect. But actually, if you put a mono plugin, so in Logic you have this gainer plugin, and I can just put mono on. If you put a mono plugin on after the reverb, it makes it sound a lot more natural. So here's exactly the same reverb effect, but the first one is going to be in mono and the second one is going to be in stereo, but they were exactly the same settings in the reverb.
One of the great things about having all these snare reverbs is that not only can we use them as more variations, but we can also use them to tail off or to lead into breakdown sections. And here I've got this cool effect where I've actually turned on a delay sort of as the tail of the snare is hitting. So I've left the hit out and it's just gonna delay the tail of the snare in this into the breakdown section. And it just helps to lead the drums into the breakdown. <laughs> Right, so now we're at the part where we can stop recapping and we can really start to delve into some new territory. Firstly, I want to talk about the drum replacement or hit swapping technique that I briefly mentioned in my last video, and this is actually really easy to set up in Renoise. The first thing we've got to do is obviously take a break. And one thing I will say at this stage is you do want something that's quite short, like a two bar passage. Anything that's longer will become really laborious to do beat swapping with. And actually you can just rework the break later once you've swapped all the sounds. Let's go and just chop our break up and I'm just gonna do it at all the hits here. So I've chopped everything up and then I can right click and go slices, render slices to phrase and it's come out way too quick. So the first thing I wanna do is lower this lines per beat value. And so we just wanna trigger this from the main passage. That's just gonna make it easier to trigger it so I can just press spacebar. And then the next thing to do is to go right click and go destructively render slices. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna delete off this top slice and I'm gonna come into the phrases, select this whole instrument and just pitch it down a semitone. And that's just gonna mean that all the samples in this instrument are ones we're gonna to want to swap out. We don't have that long sample at the start. Okay, so that's really the setup done for this drum replacement. And now we've actually gotta go and start swapping out these hits. Now at this stage, I will say that I would really recommend having a good folder of kick and snares that you can drag in and out because otherwise this can become a really tedious process and it can be very time consuming as it is trying to find good sounding hits to rework the break. So let's just go, I've got my um, audio editor here and if I just go and type in snare, maybe something that's gonna hit a little bit like that. Now you can probably see in this sample, I have this little build to the snare and then I have the snare hitting. But actually if I drag this sample in, it's just got the hit. So what you can do is if you drag your new snare to a new um, instrument, you can then select the part of the snare you want to get rid of. And then I can retain the original build of the sound and that's going to help the groove stay the same as it was in the original break. So I finally got a good sounding snare there. So let's go get a kick. So I'm going back into my audio finder. This is just a sort of playlist of my favorite kick drums. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with the result I've got now and there's no real right or wrong way to do this. It's really just about experimentation and it can take a very long time, but here's the one that I programmed just now. Which is sounding quite cool. And then I think I have one that I liked even more where I actually did this one before. They're both sounding quite cool. I think they're both acceptable and I could really take them further and reprogram them. And what you could do from here is just render these. If I just render this out, this, this to 31, right click render to sample. I now have this, this new hit replace break out there and I can save this as a sample and I can take that wherever I want. Right, so here we are, we've got our original drum break, we've got all the effects versions of the break, we've got the hit variations, and we've got the hit replacement break. And now we're gonna to get to the crux of this whole tutorial and the reason why I've gone through all of that effort to prepare all of these different variations of the break. And this is about creating the ultimate break swapping instrument in Renoise.
So the first thing we want to do is pick our favorite breaks from all of those ones that we created before. And the max you can have is 12 for this instrument. Renoise will only let you play 12 samples at the same time, so you can't do any more. But all you want to do is have your original sample at the start and then have all of your other effects instruments after. So to start this off, we've got to come into the modulations tab and then we've got to look for this thing called stepper. And in this volume stepper, we first want to put the step down to nothing. And then the length I'm going to put up to 13. And then if I come into this external editor, hit this little draw button, and then I'm going to draw along the bottom. I'm just going to make sure there's points on all of them, but not on the last one. And then I'm going to create 11 variations of that. So we're going to have 12 in total. And then I need to assign all my instruments to these different uh, modulation lanes. And then I've now got to come to each lane. And I've got to pull up the points one by one on all the lanes. Amazing. And now the last thing I want to do is I have to assign the reset to this macro. I've got to assign reset on all of these lanes. Okay, wicked. So now the setup is done and we can actually just use this break swapping macro to flip between all of those breaks. So I've got the original one on nothing. And as I turn up this macro, it's going to swap through all of these other breaks. Which is insanely cool. So a few other things I've done is I have level matched some of these just in this panel just to try and get everything to sound a little more, a little bit more balanced. And then I've also put on forwards loops for all of these samples so they're all just going to play round and round and round. I wanted to say at this stage I have got another sample pack for this tutorial. It's got my macro effects in, it's got this uh, break swapping instrument in, it's got loads of dub effects, it's got all the breaks and effects variations and essentially everything you're going to hear in this tutorial and in my track I made it's going to be in that sample pack so it'd be amazing if you could support my channel i've also got a free sample pack up there for anyone who wants to grab it um, they'll all be in the links below okay so we are finally here the final destination and all the work that we've done creating all of those assets and those tools for us is really just to make this point as fun as possible and for me it's all worth it when i get to the programming stage because it just makes it so enjoyable having all of those variations and just different things you can call upon when making your drum breaks what's so amazingly cool about this break swapping instrument is you can just program it how you usually would using the SSX commands and then whenever you want to pull in some variation of your breaks maybe in a drum fill you can just automate it up with right click so all I'm doing here is just right clicking up and I'm just using a slightly different variation of a kick here this is just the intro section I didn't want to do anything too crazy and so I've just done a little bit of variation here but as the song progresses I do add more and more of these cool break, break variations What's so crazy about being able to do all the break swapping from a macro in Renoise is that we can actually modulate and automate that macro. And so here I've actually created an LFO and I've got it on custom mode and then I've changed it from lines to points. And so I've got this LFO moving around and the only thing I think you really want to have to focus on when you're modulating this break swapping instrument is you generally want to do it in a quantized way. When I was doing it in a way where it was swapping the break in the middle of hits, like in the middle of a snare hit, it was sounding a bit weird. But doing it in a quantized way, it works really, really well. And you can obviously then start automating the amplitude and the offset of this LFO and get really crazy and advanced with the whole thing. 
But actually for me, just having four points that it was swapping to individually gave me this really cool sound for this aggressive break section I did in the second half of the track. One thing I just want to stress at the end here is that even though I spent a considerable amount of time making all the samples and the assets for this track, all the drum variations, everything, it actually took me ages to program it as well. And if I go to my session time tracker, I've nearly spent 20 hours just on the programming of this track alone. And all I want to really stress here is that when I was starting to learn music and when I was in the early days of my music production, I would never grind through the track and I would always get to the sort of five or six hour mark and I would just leave a track there and I wouldn't know where to go from there. I wouldn't have sort of the resilience and the grit to really push through. And I think it's so important to finish songs and to really work at finishing as a skill in itself. If I can leave you with anything from this tutorial is that you just really got to grind through sometimes to get to that result. Anyway, I hope this has been a good exploration into drum breaks for you all and I will catch you very soon on my channel. Peace.